Okay, now that we have the uh, the unit apart, we're going to fully disassemble it. And um, basically, all we want to do is take out the screw. So we're going to need the VT10 take uh, torque or drive. And again, all these parts are going to be down at the bottom there. Everything that you need. So I usually just do this by memory. So just doing it by and teaching somebody uh, again I'm not a professor but we're going to take the uh, the VT8 torque wrench and we're going to get into these three right here see this one is a little crooked so that's another indication and it's not coming out quite well so I'm going to switch over to the VT10 just to get a little thing I'm glad that you're able to cop catch that because sometimes they just so watch out when you use the VT10 on these uh, screws because they really like to stick. You can go and buy torque wrenches or a drill like this. It's cheaper to buy them in the uh, in the tool. One of the things I also like to do is I also like to keep a little plastic piece, a little container for all the parts. So just go ahead if you want to keep that there. That way that you know that you're reassembling everything properly. Okay, so now that we have this upside down, and a lot of this right as of to this point is redundant, but what I'm going to show you here is going to be pretty amazing because everyone else dances around why or they assume why that the uh, uh, the Xboxes break down. Well, one of the main things is that they put in ter cheap thermal heat, heat sink paste and, um, well, or compound. I think it's more of a compound because it dries out. But they do that for one or two reasons. It's one, they, so that you have to send it back into the service department and pay them 150 bucks after the warranty's up. Or they're just trying to cut a corner save 10 cents on the uh, actual the amount of paste which is very small which doesn't make sense to me based on the volume of units that they're producing so you can take it for what it's worth this is just a great way to be able to you know even if you have to go out and buy some additional parts you can uh, you know, fix a couple of Xboxes and make your money back. And a lot of people out there doing this for 50 bucks a pop. 50 bucks. I I do it actually for 25 because uh, it's just kind of on the side, and I want to help people out. And the parts that I end up using end up costing about 10 dollars. So. and what's the one to come out so those last two are going to have to just fall out all right again do not do this on the carpet static electricity can damage so at this point the only thing that we have left is to remove the board out so unclamp the fan and lift it up so the uh shell aside because we're going to need that because it has a good stable base and then you flip it upside down all right other indications is that we don't have any thermal mats right here or padding on these are additional video chips right there and that's that's pretty sad and uh, you should have that there as far as padding goes because those do get a little heated up and then they act as a well, some type of a, uh, a heat deferral from the, um, I don't see it too much. I think it's more of a padding between that and the actual, actual unit. So at this point, I like to use a flathead screwdriver. Now don't worry, you're not going to damage your board, but do be very careful. So I'm going to 
close in on this because I think this is pretty important how, how to get these up. You're going to take it right here and you're going to just set it on top of the uh, actual and just peel it up. Make sure you stay within the actual metal. Do not use the board as leverage. If you do that, you're going to damage the board. So be very careful during this spot. Okay. You know, if, if I feel like I'm going to get into that board, I do not move it up. Okay, so there's, there's one of them off there. Remember, be very careful during this spot. I, I kind of stress so much on here. Pay attention to what you're doing because you're not going to repair your board that way. Voila! So now that it's off, we have just the bare board. And you can take this off. And you can see from the units, then this is a very old unit. This should have white thermal paste. Again, another indication that this board has been repaired. So, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to clean up the units. Um, I like to use Q-tips and 99% rubbing alcohol. Do not go to the dollar store and buy the dollar 50% rubbing alcohol. Go to Walgreens or whatnot and buy the dollar nineteen ninety nine cent rubbing alcohol. They're they're not that expensive, so so I just like put it on here because I like to let it dry and just clean off this part right here, and then get to the edges. clean off the GPU. The GPU has the two um, top basic chips on it, on the bigger of the two chips and it's the one that runs with the, the heat sink. Now they have the bigger ones because they, they weren't being able to be cooled. I've seen variations of this on here on YouTube about how a guy actually made his own, own box and actually took the uh, CD drive and moved it up off there and made it all clear. It's pretty cool. So, yeah, the uh, the biggest problem I have with the Xbox and the PS3s is the case. Cases do not provide a, a lot of area for breathing and cooling down the units. And the fans, they need to be stronger as well. But especially with the Xbox, it gets into the GPU unit and just really, well. So I'm just going to fast forward through this phase as I clean this off here. Take your time doing it. And uh, go from there. If you want to, you can use some paper towels just to get the initial parts off and then kind of go from there. So, all right, I'm going to have these cleaned up and I'll be right back.
Okay, so now after we applied the permanent fix and we did our, our, our unique little uh, procedure here, we're going to go ahead and test it. Now, what's nice about it is that this is a permanent fix. It is not a, and you can see the green lights go on, and it's ready to go. So if you want this type of fix for the unit, then just go ahead and click down below. It's like I said, it's less than four dollars. I think it's three eighty-seven, something like that. And uh, you're going to get a permanent fix. You're going to get a lot of step-by-step uh, -step detail that anybody. I'm talking about anybody. Even my 14-year-old son can do this. And um, what's nice about it is that you're not going to have to worry about overheating or whatnot. You're not going to have to worry about two months down the road whether or not your Xbox is going to go uh, kaput. I have tested this on so many different units. I get about 20 to 25 Xboxes per month, get this repaired, and in uh, about 97% of the time, they get repaired. If it if you're not able to repair it, you're only out less than four dollars, but um, you have a damaged motherboard. That means somebody else has tried to fix it before and they really damaged the motherboard itself somewhere that's on there. So I hope this has been helpful. Again, you know, if you want to learn how to do this properly and not have to worry about a, a temporary fix, this is a permanent fix. Yeah, go down to the link below and uh, and watch my other videos. Thank you very much.